Farid Shafiev, the chairman at the Center of Analysis of International Relations. He's also Azerbaijan's former ambassador to Canada and the Czech Republic. So therefore, Mr. Ambassador, welcome to the program. Let's start with the very latest. We've just heard from Sergei Lavrov speaking after meeting his Armenia counterpart in Moscow. And the Russian foreign minister has said that Moscow would like to see a ceasefire. It would like there to be more substantive talks between Armenia and Azerbaijan and that there will be a meeting of the Minsk group. But he didn't seem to give any sort of concrete ideas how these things would happen. Do you think Russia is the main interlocutor here? That that's the country you two should be listening to? Well, uh, Russia for years was very active member uh, of the so-called co-chairs of the Minsk group, three countries, United States, Russia and France, and Russia perhaps was the most active members. In the meantime, we know that Russia also has military base in Armenia and, you know, supplied uh, the weapons uh, to Armenia, though um, occasionally it also supplied to Azerbaijan too. Uh, definitely, uh, Russia is the main player in the region. But uh, we see that the ceasefire, which was brokered in uh, Russia uh, on Saturday, I mean, the night between Friday to Saturday, was violated by Armenia and in a very, I would say, the, the blatant way, they, they targeted uh, the second largest uh, Azerbaijan city, quite far from the front line. So uh, it really uh, cast doubt on the, on, on the ceasefire, which was indeed brokered by, by Moscow. So uh, today, President Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, speaking to um, Haber TV, uh, Global Haber TV, he underlined that tu Turkey should be added to the list of uh, co uh, the co-chairs because three countries, United States, France, and Russia, we have all three countries has influential uh, diasporas, Armenian diasporas, and in one or another way, they are influencing sometimes uh, political decisions. So uh, we should, uh, I mean, the, 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 in the sum up, we should carefully consider the, the outcome of today's meeting. Uh, and uh, in a view that uh, the ceasefire is violated, uh, we, I mean, there's not much trust in Azerbaijan, uh, what Armenia says. Do you think that Azerbaijan will continue its position of responding to Armenian strikes rather than conduct first strikes? I mean, quite clearly, we understand that both countries are accusing each other of launching the first strikes. But Azerbaijan's position is that it's taking the appropriate, is the word it uses, measures when it receives incoming fire from Armenia. From the perspective of international law, uh, the UN Charter, uh, Article 51, it's our territory. Uh, so it's uh, 51 speaks about self-defense. So it's the legitimate right uh, uh, by Azerbaijani to strike, uh, I mean, to give uh, appropriate response. And the president today told about that. Uh, again, um, the outside and the president and the, I mean, it's the will of the whole, whole, whole nation to put an end to the 30 years of occupation. Either it will be peaceful through negotiations or it will be militarily which is, uh, as I said, it's quite a legitimate way to restore our uh, territorial integrity. It's very interesting that President Aliyev has said that he would like Turkey to be involved. Do you think that he might be looking at the history of the Minsk group and saying that since 1992, that group didn't no. achieve anything in terms of finding a longer term resolution? And then we've had the head of uh, the EU's foreign policy unit, Josep Borrell, saying that the EU Council which is made up of every single leader of an EU country, that that council doesn't want to be involved in the mediation and that it should be given that responsibility to the Minsk group. So if the EU is a very important bloc is not going to be involved, the Minsk group is not having success, is that what Aliyev is thinking, that we need another player here in this equation? Yeah. As you said, you know, we have these negotiations for 28 years. And uh, since 97, it's uh, dealt by three countries, uh, which I mentioned. The European Union never been an active player in the region. And apparently, we see that uh, the European Union is not willing to be a, an active player. So basically, we're coming to the old format of three countries, which really, um, I think, from our perspective, from Azerbaijan perspective, didn't put enough pressure on Armenia. We had agreement, so-called Madrid Principles, which was declared first time in 2007, 
and Armenia abandoned the moderate principle. This year, the Armenian foreign ministry uh, announced that uh, we are, uh, they don't want to continue the discussion around the moderate principles. So we are looking for some new possibilities, new avenue. And of course, the, the, the role of Turkey coming to that picture, probably we are speaking about the, uh, the Turkey and Russia, because as we see the France, unfortunately, the President Emmanuel Macron, he unilaterally, uh, I mean, bluntly said that uh, he's going to support Armenia. And the United States, because of the elections, basically disengaged from the process. So uh, indeed, uh, we're speaking about two major regional powers, uh, Russia and Turkey. Ambassador Farid Safiev, thank you for joining us on the news hour. Appreciate it.